And we're just days away from a once in a lifetime celestial event, a total eclipse of the sun. Parts of our state will be in the path of totality. And our Anthony Giannis has those details right now. Yeah, and Amy, here in Houston, we get a partial eclipse where the moon will uh, look uh, like it's taking a big bite out of the sun. And while we are hoping for clear skies, scientists are hoping to learn from the eclipse. Joining me now is NASA solar astrophysicist Alex Young. Uh, good morning, Alex. Thanks for joining us. How good is morning. the solar eclipse different from the one in 2017? Well, um, this this eclipse has a couple of things that are different. Um, first of all, the path itself is wider than it was in 2017, and because of the the size of the shadow also the length of totality so if you're in that path of totality you can have up to almost two minutes more of totality and in some places four and a half minutes and lastly um, a lot more people are going to see it more more than 10 million additional people live in that path and will get to experience the eclipse even if they just walk out that the outside their door but the, for the scientist's point of view, the sun changes, the corona itself changes over the solar cycle, and it's going to be very different during this particular eclipse than it was in 2017. Yeah, I was in Eola Hills, Oregon for the 2017 eclipse, and I had 58 seconds, and it went by so fast. And I'm in <laughs> Fredericksburg, Texas this time, so I'll get four minutes and 23 seconds. Of course, we are hoping for clear skies. Forecast doesn't look good right now, but a total solar eclipse is the only time we can see that outer atmosphere of the sun with our own eyes. Uh, what will scientists be looking for during this eclipse? Well, it, during the eclipse, this outer part of the atmosphere called the corona is a really special place where solar activity originates. So these are huge explosions, solar flares, and also big eruptions of material. And that gives us the beautiful aurora, the northern and southern lights, but it also impacts our technology communications, GPS, and even power grids. So this is a unique opportunity to study it in a way that we could never do uh, otherwise. And as that shadow moves across the country, it changes the atmosphere and gives us an opportunity to study many different layers of the atmosphere during this uh, period with the totality. And, and later this year, NASA's Parker Solar Probe will make history when it flies closer to the sun than any other spacecraft. It's actually going to fly through that corona you were just talking about. Uh, so tell me about this mission. Well, this is a really, really unique mission. It's completely autonomous. It travels around the sun and each time getting slightly closer and closer. By the time uh, we reach December 24th of this year, Parker Solar Probe will make its closest approach a, a little less than 4 million miles away from the surface of the sun, flying through the corona, flying through this part of the atmosphere we can see during a total solar eclipse. But Parker will be measuring it directly, giving us data that we've never had before to really understand what's happening at the source of all of this exciting activity on the sun. Yeah, what's incredible about that is you just think about the surface of the sun at being at 50,000 degrees, and then you have the corona at 2 million degrees. And so why? And, you know, when you're able to go in there and look at it, I just think so many answers you're going to find uh, with this. That's pretty incredible. So how people have known how to predict eclipses for thousands of years through the sorrow cycle, which I think is, what is that, an 18-year cycle in three months or yes. three days or something like that. But a NASA mission has made those predictions even more precise in the past few years years. How is this happening? Well, uh, one of the things that's really important is the moon itself. The moon, a lot of the previous predictions make the assumption that the moon is very smooth, and it's not. It's got mountains, and depending on the orientation, how that shadow casts on the ground is different. And so we have very precise measurements of this now from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. That information we then take back and use in our maps and gives us much more accurate timing and much more accurate location and gives us a view of what's happening during the eclipse that we have not had throughout all the times that we've been predicting it. Yeah, I was just reading an article about how people on the outer edges of that path of totality, it's like you really need to be careful because there's a chance you think you're in the path, but because as you mentioned, yep. because of the shape of the moon, you actually might be out of the path 
and then you're only seeing a partial eclipse, you're not even getting a totality there. So really fascinating stuff there. So eclipses are a special kind of transit, uh, but what's cool is it's just that perfect matching, so it's not actually a transit, but how are transits helping scientists search for life on other planets? Well, you know, just like uh, an eclipse where an object moves in front of the star, a transit, we actually look at other stars outside of our solar system and we see planets moving in front of them. And so depending on how the light changes and also depending on how the, the spectrum, the rainbow of that light changes, we can look at that change in the light and, we, and it allows us to actually measure and determine if there are specific elements and specific compounds in in the atmosphere, those compounds that are critical for life or even could be the sign of life being there. And that is giving us this unique opportunity with things like the James Webb Space Telescope to determine if there's life or the potential for life outside of our own solar system. That's pre it's pretty incredible. Last question for you, Alex. So what are some ways our viewers can get involved with solar science during this total solar eclipse? Well, there's a whole bunch of uh, ways that NASA is sharing its science with the public. So there are some specific app, apps that you can have on your phone. There's a program called uh, Sun Sketcher, which allows you to follow the solar eclipse and trace out the, the corona itself. There's a GLOBE program, GLOBE Observer, allows you to take measurements of the clouds and the temperature uh, as that eclipse is progressing. And so all of this is data that you can, as a, as a member of the public, can gather and help share with NASA and be part of the scientists and be one of the many scientists that are helping us understand the eclipse and our own world around us. Uh, Alex, thank you so much for your time this morning. That was, that was fascinating stuff. And of course, uh, looking forward uh, to this total solar eclipse, where are you gonna be? I am actually going to be very close to you, just outside of Fredericksburg. So I'm hoping right. the weather is going to hold. Um, and so you and I will probably be maybe even in waving distance from each other. <laughs> oh, that, well, that's awesome. Okay. Well, we'll be close. And again, thank you for your time.